Hey there, Schwerbert Alish here. Yeah, um, just recently I had the opportunity to speak to the guys of Quelen, a Finnish black metal band with, uh, yeah, singing about very nihilistic stuff, not the usual um, black metal themes, no Satan, no church burning. So that was a bit different. We had a lot of fun, the guys were very cool and yeah if you like black metal or you just like to listen to me stumbling through the English language <laughs> have fun enjoy yourself and uh, most important of all stay safe so, uh, this is Schwermetallisch I'm talking to the guys of Quelen and that's Henry and Samuli hi guys hi how's it going hello so, yeah, I, I've got a, a few questions on my notebook because I uh, yeah restructured myself <laughs> a little bit in the last days. And uh, you got an upcoming LP on the 19th in yes. f about five days. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's I think it's, 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 it's next Friday, I, if I remember correctly. So this interview will go live on Friday, too. Okay, yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> So um, yeah, I'm I'm not the um, the biggest hardcore black metal fan. I'm just getting into the more extreme stuff uh, at the moment. Um, and of course, I'm, I don't speak any Finnish. What are your uh, subjects you sing about? You write about? Um, well, there's a lot of things. There's quite a lot of abandonment and mistrust I would say our our vocalist is um, he's <laughs> he doesn't really um, open up from those subjects too much yeah um, yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah but I would say that the subjects are really personal for him and uh, well there's a lot of abandonment mistrust being lost um, mentally I would say rather than physically and just um, sort of a frustration towards life in general. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I get, I yeah, get the that. Themes, <laughs> yeah, the themes are like more of a like dark mindset of yeah. things ra rather than the usual black metal themes that we sing, that bands sing about. And it, it, it's, it's like mental side more than, yeah. than yeah. the... Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, that pretty, was the reason I asked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty dark, dark and sort of uh, like really, really deep things from. Uh, but but it's written like if you understand Finnish, it's written in a really straightforward way. Um, <laughs> like if you understand Finnish, then yeah. Not not yet. <laughs> yeah. I got another interview with a Finnish band uh, in, in the next uh, days, so so maybe I catch something. <laughs> okay, <laughs> one or two words. <laughs> yeah, you gotta learn all the swear words first. Yeah, it's it's always uh, the curse words you, you yeah, learn first much. in every language. Much. Yeah. So 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 what is uh, um, equivalent to to fuck or shit? <laughs> yeah, the the. The equivalent of fuck is vetto in Finnish. Vetto? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, but the most like power, powerful uh, curse word we use is pergele. It's like, it, it's an old word for the for the devil in Finnish. So that's kind of what the, like okay, the I, I, I have most to used and... Read that. Most, yeah. Okay, vetto. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good. good. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I speak Finnish, darling. <laughs> so, um, okay, that was the uh, first one. Yeah, of, of course, the reason why I asked was, um, yeah, the, the, the classical subjects for, for black metal bands were the devil, Satanism, and uh, stuff like that. And uh, because you guys are Finnish and uh, the vocals or the, the songs are uh, in, in Finnish, the names of the songs are in Finnish, I, uh, yeah, I, I thought, uh, maybe they're not singing about the devil. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, I would say that there, there are a few few moments or a few lines in the vocals that mention 
mention Satan, but all in all, uh, I think from the start with this group and once, once um, like everyone that we have now were in the band or you know, started being in the band, it was pretty clear that um, you know the usual topics would not be something that yeah. um, would be like the main point. Uh, yeah, but there are a few remarks and a few lines that mention Satan, and it's always implicit, I would say, uh, in everything there. Like most of the things there are, but yeah, it's it's not like in your face Satanism, or it's it's not maybe satanic in in the usual way. Yeah, you uh, you guys on the on the photos, you um, don't look like the the typical band too and that's uh i really find that uh i find it nice i think it's nice to to have a black metal band that is not over the top uh mm. and dressed like that and uh yeah yeah, yeah we, don't have, we don't have spikes or and corpse corpse bands so it's a <laughs> yeah. I, also... I, re I reviewed a band yesterday and they the the, the epk the the press text and the the pictures that came with it were just like Full, full frontal. They were wearing uh, battle vests and and and, and uh, yeah hoods, and the, you couldn't f see their faces, and everything was black or red, and it was very, very uh, cliche. And yeah, I don't know yeah. the word right now in English, but in, in German it's kitschig, a uh, cheesy. Right. Yeah. 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 Ah, okay. Yeah, it's I think like... that's. I think that's that's pretty much what we're trying to avoid it's it's not like we've made a choice that we will not be like that but it's it's more of a um it was clear from from the from from the beginning that this group would not become like one of those cheesy or stereotypical um sort of like spikes and black and corpse paint and everything it just doesn't fit it just doesn't seem right and for myself it, music has always been about honesty and yeah. if, we, if we would do that, then we would not be honest about what, how the whole how the whole band would feel and what would be the starting point. Yeah, you you seem uh, more uh, authentic. Doing doing what you do, looking like you look on that pics and here on on the interview. Of course, you, you could sit there in in your in your uh, kitchen <laughs> with with <laughs> cough paint and and spikes and everything, and uh, maybe yeah. something burning in the background. Yeah, nothing yeah, wrong yeah. with that. I, I, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, then then you had have, have to uh, explain to, to to your wife why the kitchen is on fire, but uh, <laughs> hey, it's fun to why there's great. why there's blood on the walls, you know. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, I, I I think our wives have have like get used to that already. So. <laughs> something yeah, there's yeah, something yeah, 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 funny yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, but that's yeah. that's. That's heavy metal. Wives get used to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, true. That's yeah, true. it comes with the package. <laughs> yeah, that is that is that is correct. Um, yeah. well, what yeah. I noticed about your your new uh, one, Uno dan sinut. Hmm. I don't know if, if that was right, but <laughs> it was it was yeah. it was pretty close. Yeah, yeah close enough. It, yeah. Is it yes. sinut or? Yeah, it is sinut. Sinut. Yeah. Uno uh, dan sinut. Yes. Uno dan sinut. Yeah. And it translates okay. to I forget you or forgetting you. It's a... That sounds really sad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the first thing I noticed about uh, Uno dan sinut was uh, the cover artwork. I really like that. It's. Uh, Quite romantic. <laughs> it's black on black, with a little black on the black. Yeah. <laughs> but I really, uh, it's, it's it's a cool <laughs> cover artwork. Who did that? It was I. I personally, I really like the cover art. And it was yeah. the the picture was done, if I remember right, Henry. That was actually done quite a before, even before the album was done. Yeah, yeah, it was. And, and the idea of it was was like it, it's a pretty long time ago yeah i uh, always dig great cover artwork and it's uh i still sometimes try to uh if i'm 
grocery, uh, if I'm shopping or shopping around on the internet, or if you really go out and uh, yeah, uh, at, at the record store, oh. sometimes I, I look for the covers and it's like I, I don't know the band, but I have to listen to that because that cover artwork is oh. fucking great, and uh, it's. Uh, it's, it's very often it's really like okay, and the music fits. It's like what what you like in in, in the visuals uh, is is oh. often some some kind of mirrored in the music. Uh, that's that's great, I think. Yeah, and still works. I, yeah, I I agree with with cover arts. Um, I usually like covers that I know what I'm getting, and and it creates an image. It creates a visual sort of like an idea of what is inside this album. Um, I don't really like covers that I don't really know what's what, what I'm going to be getting and, and I don't know what what they're, what's going on. Uh, it needs to be clear and it needs to be sort of uh, represent rep representing the music as it should be. Uh, yeah. 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 There's, there's, there's some covers of uh, progressive metal or progressive rock bands, and you're standing there like, <laughs> what, what what the fuck? Yeah. What is going on in the covers? Yeah. I, I don't know what, what what you want to say to me. It's like it's it's blank and white, and there's a red points somewhere, and it's like ah yeah <laughs> what? <laughs> so, and then you're trying to figure out like what is going on? What, what what's this music? And you have all of these songs, and what is this? And and when you, when you don't understand like the, what is going on, is something yeah. that I would like to avoid. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And yeah. The cover art was done done by our like singers, other bands, drummers. So he's a really good artist, and yeah, it's a really really good line art that he does. And yeah, it depicts uh, like a temple on fire on the cover. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I really like the, uh, the cross hatching in the background and uh, how the how the fire looks and yeah. fading. From black into the absolute whiteness, and that's that's a great uh, way to play with uh, with the black and the white. Yeah, he's a really 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 talented guy, and he's a, he does a lot of stuff. I think he's done, if I'm not wrong, he's done cover arts for Hex Vessel, and, yeah. and a bunch of other other bands too. Ah, yeah. I know that name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So on to the next question. Um, yeah, what are your main influences as uh, musicians? Ah, uh, <laughs> some if you start. Sure. Um, I'm gonna pour, some, pour myself some coffee. <laughs> that's a tough one. Uh, I would say that there's a lot of things, yeah, you know, lot lot of stuff outside of black metal that influences me, and then lot, lots of things inside of black metal that influences me, but. If I would have to narrow down to like maybe a few uh, the most important bands that influence me at the moment and have influenced me, I think the main one would be uh, ISIS from from you know United States. Uh, that was maybe the band that actually like got me into heavy music that had had more than than just the guitars and and just the riffs and had ideas and it it had it had like really really long songs uh and then if other things i've always been fascinated by really really heavy music and like really uh like music that's that's not like heavy in a riff based way but maybe in in atmosphere so neurosis that's i i love that band neurosis wow i just yeah i gotta put a record on after this <laughs> but um that would be the next one and then uh powerful vocals and powerful sort of like sounds uh tom waits blood money record oh my god oh man that's that's one of my favorite records and then if we go into black metal i'd say dark throne that would be the most maybe the most important thing um and then also a finnish band behexen which which is actually really like it, it's 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 yeah it's it's really true black metal band i love this but just like to name maybe the most important ones for for this band uh those would be ones i obviously isis and neurosis you can't really hear in in Quellen sound but it's always in the background that is a band name that didn't age well huh 
ISIS. I know, I yeah. know. They had they had to like <laughs> once they they actually stopped playing. They they called it quits like years before <laughs> before the 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 uh, like the band name started being that good. So they had to rename their Facebook page ISIS the band. Yeah. For obvious uh, reasons. Though. Yeah, and, and, and the, the first question that comes to mind at that is, is there a Facebook page for the terrorist organization? <laughs> <laughs> ISIS, it's a terrorist organization. That'd Not be to be... <laughs> that would be... Yeah. yeah, they get some strange copyright infringements. Like, who? Who has our um, page? I but know. I really think if you are a terrorist and you have uh, uh, your own copyright, you've made it. You're really <laughs> you're up with the big ones. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Henry, what about you? Yeah, for me, like uh, I have a background of like melodical death metal bands, and if we go to so far that in, in my childhood I listened to like these '90s big bands for me, like Pantera and Sepultura and uh, Machine Head, and this kind of a, like these bands were playing on my brother's stereos when I was just a little kid, so that was kind of the baseline that I grew up in, in the heavy metal, and and after that, like, at some point in my life, Children of Bottom was a very big, big thing for me, and other melodic death metal bands like that, and, like, the, the black metal has always been, like, in the background, in the music, so, it, like, bands like Immortal and these... Dark Throne and this kind of a band, so. so so yeah, it's kind of a it's not so black metal ish my background for the music and its influences, but uh, but like the black metal bands I like very much are these traditional Finnish black metal bands like Horna and these guys. So okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. So it's. So uh, uh, and this kind of a, like a, it, it was this kind of a punk and new metal met things that were in the nineties were were a big thing too like Biohazard and uh, I can't name any bands right now but but yeah new metal metal was the beginning of the end for me <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and the whole nineties felt like there was no metal. At that time, uh, because there was, there was no internet and I, I didn't have the money to, to read all the magazines and uh, stuff like that, I, the charts in Germany, it was like uh, there's just pop and dance floor and, and, and rap oh. and all that stuff. And there, there were no heavy metal, no rock around. And uh, the only thing on TV that was, was metal or rock was um, Headbangers Ball. Yeah, but it always uh, um, it was um, uh, always at night. So uh, I, I went oh. to school in in, in the nineties, and I uh, couldn't watch Headbangers Ball. So my my life was fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, we had like my brother recorded it, it on tape the Headbangers Ball. So we watched it over and over again. And I think there was the first times like uh, I saw an immortal video there it was cream and frostbitten kingdoms and it was like a for a teenager like what the fuck is this and this is like sounds horrible but it's great at some 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 way so it's kind of a, that yeah. there was this first black metal influences so <laughs> yeah. there was but, I but think, yeah I, I, I was i was wrong there was one thing that was heavy metal in the 90s and i was able to watch it beavis and butthead <laughs> ah yeah <laughs> I've tried to watch all of those episodes that I've I've, I've been able. Beavis and Butthead. That's <laughs> yeah, so good. Yeah, yeah, it is. And Slayer became from the like like MTV and Beavis and Butthead from there also. It's a. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. like I started thinking about it. the Henry said Headbangers Ball and, and recording those things on tape. Uh, I didn't really watch those things and. I didn't really get into like heavy music or, or metal music till I was much, much older. Uh, but like in when I was in sixth grade or was it on fifth grade, my, my friend had, he had Sepultura and a bunch of other like heavy bands on 
on yeah. on on cassettes and we would listen to those and I would not understand anything and it was scary but it was really like interesting at the same time and then I would listen to those those tapes at home and trying to understand what was going on but now it was just but then the whole thing sort of like I, I forgot about all of that heavy heavy stuff for like many 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 years and then I think when I, I think I was in 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 high school my friend played me fin troll and then then the whole thing sort of like ah uh, yeah fin troll too <laughs> it was a big <laughs> thing for me too and yeah yeah and of course this swedish like death metal bands like uh in flames and soil work and at the gates and these were a huge thing in the like in the late 90s and be, beginning of this millennia and everything mm. so so th- those were a big thing for me. I, I still like In Flames. It's and so it works. It's they're really yeah, really in, good. Yeah. Bad, so in, in Flames has has good good records. It has they have good records. I never um, got into In Flames. To to be honest, uh, I think they they really sound great. But I, I um, at that time I first checked them out. I really couldn't listen to the vocals. Ah, okay. It was like I don't know. Oh. I um, listened to to power metal, I think, 15 years or, or, or so, and uh, I, I, uh, one day I broke my I broke my hand and uh, couldn't go to work and uh, was at home for five weeks, and then I um, fell into the rabbit hole that is YouTube, <laughs> and uh, that was thrash metal. And I, uh, yeah, I fell in love with, uh, with thrash metal, and that's that was that was a way. So uh, and now I'm I'm uh, exploring death and black. And black black metal is is uh, the most difficult for me to get into. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. So. Yeah, I, I I agree with that. I actually had like a really big big problem with with black metal before I understood what was going on. But the record that actually opened everything up for me was Immortals at the Heart of Winter because that record is filled with good riffs and it has really, really good, like almost, it, it has lots of thrash metal in there, but also like really good dose of like, or, like early heavy metal stuff and, and really fast, fast stuff and fast drumming. And it was just that, that, that record opened up so many doors for me. And then I started actually going more into that, in, into the actual black metal and and, and that music that had more meaning than be, besides the actual songs and besides the riffs. And then, yeah, I'm I'm on the same path ever since. For me, it's the vocals. Okay. And with with that death metal, it's it's the uh, the same. I always. Uh, or maybe at the start, at the beginning of getting into another genre, I need vocals that border on synth I like. Right. To to get into it. So uh, if I if I'm like like a death metal band, it's not like a death metal band like uh, Bolts Raw or something like that. It's just noise on the microphone <laughs> for me. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I need someone who, who who's, who's got got a little groove on. Right. Yeah. I can understand and that. <laughs> the, the first yeah. death metal band that really got me in in the last uh, month was uh, Leek from Sweden. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's good. Yeah. It's really. Good. I haven't they, listened uh, to it, but I've heard the name a bunch of times. So uh, yeah, I definitely need to check those guys out. It's like extra angry thrash metal. Yeah. Yeah, and Leek has this kind of a, like old old school Yetebori metal thing going on still so you don't hear that a lot of anymore in in the new band so that that's something that's crossed my heart always so Lick is a very good band I listen to it. It sounds really good. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's what what I uh it's like uh if if there's an extreme band that sounds really really rough and tough and, and edgy, but you still can uh, can make out the sound of a new wave of British heavy metal somewhere buried between all the chaos that's that's cool that's uh that's a toughness i can embrace <laughs> let's, let's put it that way um, that's actually a really good way to put it yeah so uh on your new uh, record unodan sinut 
Yep. I think Senior was wrong this time. Uh, uh, what's your favorite song? Um, Sorry. That's your, your favorite uh, of uh, the songs of that, of your, of your uh, LP. Oh, ah, yeah. Suddenly, do you? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think. It's, yeah. Uh, the, the one that we released on the, the music video a few days ago, I think that might be my favorite. It was not, it was not my favorite before we re recorded it and before Eto put, put his vocals on the track, but the chorus of that song is really, really good. I really love that song. That's maybe my, my favorite. Or then uh, I would say the last one would maybe be my favorite. If I have to choose, it would be either the last one or the music video one. Tempeli. Yep, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, for, for me, I think it's the uh, the title track, Uno Hedansino, is my favorite song because it's just so brutal for to play. And and, and the song itself, it just, the, the everything it catches so so good. And it, it's so brutal to play live. So that's always at the end of our like playlist because it's we are all so exhausted after that so it's <laughs> that's all so yeah it's a tough it, it's it's not like like guitar wise it's not really that hard to play live but it's exhausting you, you get exhausted yeah. from playing it okay yeah um, i'm i'm asking for from a from a uh, yeah the standpoint uh, point of view of someone who likes to sing it's uh, and i um, i realized uh, when we uh, did sing star a few years ago, <laughs> it was like there are songs you you know uh, by heart for I don't know 20 years or so, and and it's like, yeah, that's a, that's an okay song, and uh, you do you, you get to sing it yourself, and you have the lyrics, and you realize, man, it's really fucking fun to sing this. Yeah. So and and after that, you 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 see that uh, the piece of music in a totally different uh, light, and I think it's it's the same for uh, for a guitarist, for a drummer, for uh, I don't know someone who plays a fucking harp or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like oh that song is okay, and then you try to to play it, and it's like oh fuck, this is great. That is fun. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's it's weird. You might, I, when, like when you when you're playing bands, obviously you're not gonna like every song in a way that I would listen to this at home. Like if if I do this song, I listen to it at home. But yeah, like like you said, some songs might not be ones that you would listen, but you would play, and it's actually a lot more fun to play it than actually listen to it <laughs> <laughs> from like you know like being the one who writes most of the songs. <laughs> yeah, I think the difference between. Uh listening to a song and playing or singing it uh, yourself is like uh, just looking at a person or getting to know the person mm. yeah yeah it's, 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 it's really yeah deep yeah, yeah. <laughs> music is fucking deep and then, um, and, then, and then it's like even with playing songs it what tends to happen is that when you write something and then it's just like the first glimpse of it and then the first version of it and then when you started playing and you start actually actually putting your fingers through the song and, and knowing what's going on then they change you find these small like nuances or like riff endings or whatever else and then the whole thing just sort of develops once you actually get to know it properly yeah that's true because that song the music video song that someone mentioned was it's one of my favorite songs too because it's it has like really good and really a lot of energy when you play it live and when you play it all together so it's a so it's, it wasn't in the beginning when we first played it it wasn't as energetic as it, it is now so and it developed developed over time as someone said that yeah usually what happens is that songs tend to get a bit faster they start yeah. from the table they start a bit slower and then they sort of so slowly accelerate and then the last ones would be or the final version would be just way faster. Yeah, it was the same thing with the Uno Hadansino title track. Yeah. It, it was much slower at the beginning and it just got faster over time. So it's... 
Yeah, it's, it's it a, it maybe a bit like a casting, you know, you get a script to to uh, just show people what you get. And if you play that part in, in the movie later on, you have all these things you add to to, to the script and to, to the character you play. Oh. It's like, ah, okay, maybe maybe I will uh, twitch a little bit more, my, my uh, mimicry. So oh. uh, to, to create a depth to, to a character I just read on, on the script. So, so if you play it later on live, you fill it with, with uh, yeah, your, your, your own life blood. And yeah. that's that's making it faster or slower, or the the guitar solo is a bit different. Some even change the lyrics a bit yeah. for live yeah. uh, shows. So uh, yeah, I think it's it's yeah it's it's like life itself. Yeah, it just yeah. happens. Yeah, that was a Jurassic Park reference, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Life yeah, finds a way. Like a... Finds a way, yeah. <laughs> um, so, my final question to you guys. I think it's... Maybe maybe it's a tough one again. <laughs> okay. If you could choose to dream a lineup for a tour, no matter which bands, what would be the dream lineup of a tour with you and your band? Tough question. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> let me think about that for a moment. Yeah, I, 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 don't know, I don't know if I'd actually want to want to play with like any of the big groups, like really known ones. I'm not sure. Maybe uh, uh, that's a really tough one. I don't know. I would. I would maybe start with just. I would just like to play with, with, with my good friends. I would just yeah. like to play with bands that are my friends. <coughs> just like, it's no matter like what what bands they are or who they are, but as long as you know you you know who you're playing with and and yeah. there's a connection with the bands you're playing with. That's that's always the best. Like, it's yeah. You gotta know. Yeah, you just gotta like know who you're playing with and have fun with it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's those people are reliable. That, that, yeah, is, that yeah. is the good thing. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, yeah, it's the same thing for me. For like, uh, th th it would be fun to tour with the bands I know, and, and the, mm. with the guys I know. So it's the group dynamics. It's mm. it would be much more important than the like the fame that comes with with those bands. So yeah. I don't know. yeah. Now, there, there's a bunch of bands from Finland that I would like to tour with. There's from Helsinki, there's a band called Vainoa, which which are the this, this singer is a friend of mine. And uh, well, they, they're, they're putting out a record, which is really, 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 really heavy and really chaotic, really good record. I would like to tour with those guys. And then there's also a band from Helsinki, which they, they play like death metal, black metal sort of hybrid called Loputon Suo. I would like to tour with those guys, too. And then um, from Oulu, there's there's a, there's a bunch of good bands. Mustasuo, which is they they're like they're even more like hardcore, black and hardcore sort of like noise rock. Uh, it would be fun to play with those guys as well. And then there was then there was the uh, yeah, I forgot I forgot a fourth one that I was thinking about, but yeah. I would just like to play with fans. Man, I would just like to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be for me too, because there hasn't I been m much live action for a long time now. So. Yeah, I know it's 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 been a long time since anyone on this planet had a decent gig. Yeah. Apart from some American bands that yeah. behaved pretty unresponsible we played our last yeah we played our last show and that was in um Uvascula last fall was it in, yeah. was it in august i think it was great yeah. it was they had like a it was, it was just a really really small band but there was surprisingly good amount of audience but yeah but yeah it was even it was a bit stressful being with the situation as it is yeah 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 it was and there was a there was a like 
a time gap in in Finland and in the US that there wasn't any like COVID cases that much so we could go and play live but after that it blew over yeah so, yeah uh, the, the um, guys I mentioned uh, a few seconds ago it was like uh, there was a big biker fest in the US oh and it was in the midst in the midst of everything going to shit <laughs> and it was like ah yeah, yeah but yeah. but it's but it's open air so hey and yeah uh, okay uh, <laughs> and there were like uh, I, I think after it was three days or four days it was a festival with bikers and everything and uh, they estimated uh, later on that uh, they had maybe 50,000 infections wow. because wow. of this yeah. 50 fucking thousand that's uh, yeah it just, yeah. It, yeah, it just shows to me that people are people are ignorant and people don't yes. like to people don't like to think people yeah no one likes to think yeah it's yeah. it's it's almost like it hurts your brain <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes yeah, so someone said really good that it, it's kind of like if you had like zombie ap apocalypse going on and everyone was hiding in their homes and at some point, they just said, fuck it, I'm going to the beach. There's zombies, but I'm going there. So it's kind of like. Yeah. <laughs> We're at a point of. Uh, of, uh, yeah, civilizational error. <laughs> <laughs> um, where I, I really come to think that I could handle a zombie apocalypse better than this. Yeah. <laughs> because. because <laughs> I think we, we would all be less stressed if you just could go on the street and beat some zombies to death. <laughs> and it's like so 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 what? If you if you play a gig, yeah, okay, maybe maybe you attract the horde. Yeah. <laughs> but you can set them on fire. So what the fuck? Where's the problem in that? That would make an that would make a really good music video, you know, playing like a heavy metal show and just shooting yeah. up zombies, you know, from the stage, and they would be like a massive horde. <laughs> and I think there there has been some music videos on, on that. Subject. I would I would imagine there would be. Yeah. Um, do you know the, the the Punisher TV show from Netflix? Yeah. yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the the first trailer? Uh, I don't remember that. It, I watched it a, a few years ago. I haven't actually watched the second season. To, okay, to you end, have but... to you have to watch the first trailer of the first season of The Punisher right after our interview, because right. thinking about this gives me goosebumps. Okay. The they play one of Metallica in that trailer. There's not a single word spoken. I, I think in 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 the trailer, it's just visuals. And the perfectly paced and timed Metallica track in the in the background, and even the gu guitar solo uh, is paced up with a sequence of him just shooting a machine gun, <laughs> and it, it, it's just like yeah, it's, it's so <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> and of course, I wanted to 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 watch that show, but after watching that trailer, I was almost uh, almost near tears. Yeah, it was like <laughs> oh my god. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. one of my yeah. favorite songs of one of my favorite bands of all times, and of course, the Punisher is one of my favorite uh, characters. So, it it just everything. Yeah, it was fused very nicely. Yeah. <laughs> that was really really fantastic. So okay, uh, music video shooting zombies. That is that is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you need a budget for that, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't yeah, think that, that that might not be for this band, but for some some band, it would really, really, it would work really nicely. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine a death metal band would be. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah. really good with. <laughs> or like some really, really crazy, cra crazy like black thrash or thrash yeah. metal. Yeah, well, thrash death, black things. <laughs> it's like a, a thingy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's that's it for for me with questions. I have no more ammunition to shoot, 
at you. Okay. Um, it was uh, very nice to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much for your time. Yeah, thank you. It was very. It was. It was very good. It was nice talking. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe we will do do that again uh, with your next LP then. <laughs> Yeah, we're not, we don't know when. We've got about nine songs ready. Uh, and then we're going to be hitting the studio this, this spring, but we're not sure what's going to come out of there. We're, we're not sure. Let, let's see what's going what's to happen. What's, what's going to happen? Yeah, sounds up for that. Okay, so uh, have a nice uh, chilly uh, Sunday, and <laughs> uh, we'll see each other later. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. You take care. Yeah. Have a, have a nice Sunday. Yeah. yeah stay, stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.